by and by well we understand when the sense of god are gathered home we shall tell the story how we overcome we will understand it better by and by by and by by and by oh over on the other side oh yes when the sense of god are gathered home we shall tell the story how we overcome we shall understand it better by and by we are often destitute of the things that life demands want of shelter want of food and want of rain and bright sunshine through the straight and narrow way we will follow till we reach we will understand it better by and by by and by by and by oh when we overcome oh yes when the saints of god are gathered home we shall tell the story how we overcome we will understand it better by and by i thank you good morning good afternoon good evening this hour I bring you greetings in the name of the lord jesus thank you very very much for being there thank you for sharing this video because i trust god you would you will share this video after watching it thank you also for liking and thank you for subscribing to our youtube channel uh the end time truth and the end is nearer thank you for following us on the Facebook pages, uh, the end time truth. All right. God bless you. God bless you. We will do this together and we shall overcome together in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, give you glory this morning. Father, we've come that your name might be glorified. Father, glorify your name. Glorify your son, Jesus. Father, we make ourselves available for you to use. Make us your own indeed, glorious God. Have your way, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Spirit of the living God, teach us your way, Holy Ghost. You are not Pentecostal. You are not Orthodox. Father, teach us your way. Father, come and teach us your way. You are not Pentecostal, you are not Evangelical, you are not Orthodox. Daddy, you are just the Spirit of the Living God. We ask that you teach us your way, teach us your way. Your way is that which matters most. Lord, our denominational differences doesn't matter. Our Father in heaven, when you teach us your ways, the doctrinal errors and the imbalances will be taken care of. Therefore, Lord, come and teach us your ways in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you very, very much, Lord our God. In Jesus mighty name we pray this morning, this afternoon, this evening, amen, amen, amen. Thank you very much for being there. So today we're looking at a topic, glorifying God, glorifying God, glorifying God. Actually, it makes sense to tell us that the sole reason why God created man was to have glory from man. Why God created nature, why God created the earth and the heavens is for him to be glorified. And that is why Revelation chapter 4 verse 11 and thirst that he is worthy, O Lord God, to receive glory, honor, and power from all that he has made because he has created all things by his power and for his sake, for his glory, for his pleasure. Everything he made, we are made, including you and me. So, 
We're looking at glorifying God, glorifying God. God is pleased. God is glorified when, when we do the right thing, when the things he expects of us are accomplished. You know, the, it, it is not as if prosperity gospel is, a, is very wrong, it's not wrong, but it is the imbalancing. People who project it without balancing it are the people that make it wrong that makes it look like it is wrong. No, it is not wrong. So today we'll see the areas that God will be glorified in our lives. Actually, in Psalms, the Lord says, call upon me in the days, in the time of trouble, and I will deliver you. And what will happen? Ye will glorify me. But you see that there is a caveat. There is, there is a condition. You see, you can only call on the person you know. One can only call on a person that he has a relationship with. If you don't have relationship with me, you don't know me, it will not be very easy for you to call on me when you have trouble. You see, something happened recently. A young man was involved in a road accident and there was need for a vehicle to transport him from the spot to the hospital. You see, because he was a stranger within that environment, no vehicle, you know, stopped as soon as they sh should have stopped until very late, when it was very late, too late, you know, that a good Samaritan, you know, stopped and they took him to the hospital and then he was BID, he was brought in dead, you know. But if those who were trying to stop the vehicles you know, probably any of them, they knew any person that they can call upon immediately to bring his or, her, or his or her vehicle to, you know, transport the young man, you know, from that spot of the accident, his life would have been saved. Now, so what I'm trying to make of it is that even when the Lord said, call upon me in the days of trouble, because we are looking at glorifying God and we want to look at the terms of glorifying God, the conditions of glorifying God, how do we glorify God? How can we glorify God? We cannot glorify God being aliens and strangers to him. You cannot glorify God when you don't know God. If God isn't your friend, your father, your Lord, you cannot call him in the days of trouble, you know, like that. Even though he is a merciful God, oh yes, he's a merciful God. His message cannot be quantified. Somebody may put a valid argument about that God answers the prayer of a sinner. Oh, the Bible says that the prayers of a sinner is an abomination unto God. And so before one can call on God, you know, you can be a sinner one minute ago and this very minute you are accepted in the beloved. All right. And, you know, sometimes God can waver. God can waver. But that is not a, a, that is not a grant. It's not a guarantee. You know, he's a, he's a patient God. And sometimes he looks ahead, you know, knowing the future that he has for the person that is living in a certain, you know, um, uh, life that does not bring him glory now. Knowing the future that he has with this person, he can for now, you know, wave off the conditions and uh, may answer. But you see, the truth is that you don't know the plan that God has for you. You may say, I know, because he says the Bible, he says in the Bible, I know the thoughts are things towards you, the thoughts of peace are not of evil to give you an expected end. You see, somebody may quote that scriptures, but then you don't know the definite program of God for you. You don't know, you don't know the number of days that he has apportioned for you to live. You see, so that is why you must make, make haste. You see, you must be fast, you must be quick while there's the days while the sun is still up there shining all right uh, we're looking at the memory verse i just laid the foundation there we're looking at the very memory verse first peter chapter 4 verse 11 if any man speak let him speak as the oracles of god if any man speak let him speak as the oracles of god if any man minister let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. 
that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now, if you look at this memory verse, Apostle Peter was talking about the conduct of man. He says, if any man speak, let him not speak as speaking from himself, as speaking by himself. Let him not speak motivated by the flesh. You know, if you're a preacher, preach not because you know you have great mastery of the English language, right? So you want to display your your mastery. You want to you you want to be very artistic, you know, in handling words, and so that men would be wowed. This man can speak. Now he says, if any man should speak, let him speak as the oracles of God, the oracles of God, speaking the mind of God, delivering the very intent of God to the people. And some days you see, you know, many preachers have turned motivational speakers and anybody that can speak can motivate. Now, but the question should be when you are motivational or when you are motivated. Now, motivation is good, but does that communicate the very mind of God as per that time to you. You see, the Bible spoke about the sons of Issachar, that they were those that knew what Israel ought to do per season. And so you discover that when Israel were in confusion, they resort not to Judah, but the sons of Issachar. Even when the Bible said that the scepter will not depart from Judah, yet when there was confusion, when there, when there was no, no, no direct uh, direction, from anywhere, the resorts to the sons of Issachar. And the spirit of the sons of Issachar, you know, is resting upon every true child of God. And more so, anyone that is, is leading the people of God. And so, it's, it is bound to be that when you speak, don't speak as in to glorify yourself, but speak the mind of God. Uh, there's a video I will do soon. You know, when the beginning of the year comes, you see almost all the pastors and preachers, they will want to come and tell you this was what God told me about the year. And so I saw one that was saying, and uh, I was in the spirit. That was 2020. I was in the spirit and God was taking me and God was taking me. And what I saw was that the year 2020 was going to be a great year in a year of miracle, a year of this and that and that and that. But we all knew how 2020 came to pass. So uh, the truth is that majority are declaring their own mind, not actually what God gave to them. And you see, before your word will be performed, you must have risen in rank like Samuel, Elijah. You know, those people, God never allowed their words, even Elisha, to drop on the ground and they paid great price for it but that is a digression by the way and so he says now if any man minister if any man serves ministers are servants of god pastors are servants both to god and to the people now but serving the people is is not in the sense of humiliating them you know so that the congregants will not take undue advantage of the fact that we say pastors, preachers, ministers, are servants, both to God and to men. And then, you know, disrespect their pastors. You must respect your preacher. But every pastor must see himself as a servant to the Lord. And because he's serving the Lord, he's serving the interests of the Lord in the lives of the people. So automatically he becomes a servant to the people. And so if you're a minister, the Bible said that you should do it as the ability which God giveth. Now, it will, be, it will be stupid of me to come here and begin to tell you, I can see somebody watching me now, and, uh, and uh, I can see that you were born on the 12th of December, 1995, and I can see your mother is, is, is Grace. The name of your mother is Grace. The name of your father is Anthony, whereas God has not given me that. And I know if I do it, you know, some persons will be, they'll be impressed. And this is the reason why people will go to Facebook profiles of many people, of others. I have close to 5,000 friends, you know, on, uh, on my uh, timeline, my Facebook uh, 
uh, you know, page. And so it is possible for me to begin to view their profiles, find things about them, and then uh, I will come up and begin to mention it. And you will be surprised. You will be like, wow, he just mentioned my name. He just gave exact date that I was born. And uh, sometimes also they make mistake because not everybody on Facebook put their exact birth date. But this uh, futility, it is not to the glory of God. So we're looking at how to glorify God because every one of these things must be done in accordance to the principles or the precepts that have been laid down to glorifying God. So it must be, if you minister, let that person do it as of the ability which God given. There are those that God has looked upon and found them worthy to, you know, actually make them have possessed that gift that they can even read the thoughts sometimes of a person. Now, that is the gift of God. That is the ability that God has given. Now, the person that God has given the ability to heal, these are gifts and it is available unto everyone, but it is the Lord that dispenses that, you know, that, that, uh, that dispenses these, these gifts. And so it will, it, it will be, it will be self-seeking, uh, self-aggrandizing uh, for me now to begin to tell you what God has not endowed me with. They begin to act a lie, begin to do things that, that I know are within my scope of of gifting that i don't have that ability and god has not endowed me with such so i i'm not glorifying god in that and so the 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 apostle here is in these things that god in all things may be glorified through jesus christ to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever so the praise should not go to that preacher who is wearing shiny you know, wet, wet look shoes, who is wearing diamond, diamond wristwatch, diamond rings, and all that, who speaks very, very calm and cool, you know, and, uh, and uh, he becomes the center of attraction. He becomes the point of, of praise, you know, not to God now, but receiving all the praise to him. And then sometimes in pretense, they will say, I give God the glory, but the congregation, you, some of you do that. You know, I'm not, I'm not against you honoring your pastor, but what I'm saying is that God should be glorified. So we look at glorifying God this morning, you know, because God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. Our, sat, you know, satisfaction, our satisfaction of God goes a very long way to, you know, um, bring glory to God. Because when we are satisfied with God, we don't want to look elsewhere. When you're satisfied with your spouse, you don't go out committing adultery. And so when we are satisfied with God, we want to give him all the glory. When a man is satisfied with his wife, he wouldn't want any man outside there or any woman outside there to talk down at his wife. When a woman is satisfied with her husband, she would defend that her husband with everything she's got. And so when we are satisfied with God, we want to give him all the glory. Even when things are not working out well in our lives, we want to give him glory because that is the, the, that is the symbol and uh, the sign that we truly love him. And so we're looking at John chapter 15. We'll be reading from verse 1 to 8. John chapter 15. We're reading from verse 1. We read verse 1 to 8. John 15. And I read from verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. If you followed, you will see the, the, uh, 
the steps that the Lord Jesus took in explaining this. And it came to the point where he talked about his father being glorified. He said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean. Now, part of our glorifying God is the kind of fruit that we bear. If I am a child of God, I must bear fruit that represents the God I claim to be his. And the Lord Jesus said, he is the true vine. And if he is a true vine and I am part of the vine, I am I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a branch of the vine. And, and suddenly, you know, if he is the vine and I, I begin to bear wild fruits that is alien to the vine, to the true vine. Now, what will happen is that the husband man will also look at this and find it strange. And what he does is that he will cut off that branch that beareth not good fruit. And so the Lord Jesus says in verse 4, now for me to keep bearing good fruit, receive verse 3, for now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now the word of God purifies us, the word of God sanctifies us, and the word of God makes us to get more satisfied in the Lord, and that breeds more reasons for us to keep abiding in him and he in us. He says in verse 4, I abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. So you discover that when we continuously abide with the Lord, abiding in him, remaining in him, the last time we talk about the conditions for abiding in God's presence. And so, you know, this is almost like an offshoot, a, you know, a continuity of that. The Lord Jesus now is saying that, if we abide in him, that is when we will have the ability to bear the fruit that will not be, be strange, the fruit that will not be wild in nature. And there is also the possibility that a particular branch may remain there redundant. You know, I'm a village boy. And so sometimes, you know, a mango tree can bear, you know, produce flowers and then bear fruit. And the fruit, you know, will usually be sometimes from the upper branches and uh, sometimes you know that there, 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 there could be a particular branch probably something has happened to it it will only bud leaves and the other branches around it would bear fruit but that one remains barren and sometimes when we are looking for uh, a goat powder you know good uh, food what we need to feed the goats and um, if you are in a hurry, you just look at that branch of the of the tree that has nothing in it. You will carefully cut it off so that you don't affect the, the fruit that is hanging on other branches. So this is practical enough. And so the Lord is saying that barrenness is not part of the, the person that remains in him. The person who whose grace, you know, is is uh, uh, sourced from him. And the, the reason for this person that is not barren. Why he is not barren is that he has continuously abided in the Lord. He said, I am the vine. He said, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. So you cannot bear much fruit. And so Jesus said, you cannot bear much fruit except you abide in him. You know, there is the possibility that you will think you are abiding in Christ, but your activities shows everybody, your activities show everybody that you are not really abiding in the Lord. Because when you, when you claim to be in the Lord, you don't have trust in him, you don't have confidence in him, and you still visit some secret places, you still visit some places where they use other means to, you know, communicate what they call God to you, and you are deceived often, and you make some sacrifices, you know, you, you pay some money, and, and the, you know, sometimes they are, they, you are taken to the riverside, they, they, they tell you that there is some work that must be done in the riverside, and recently we saw a man who claimed to be to, to be you know working for Jesus you know he said he is is is, is a, a prince in Jesus or, or a, you know a king for Jesus now but he takes people to the riverside he takes people there and he gives sacrifice you know uh to the, the to the to the water spirit and at the end of it he will still conclude the prayers in the name of Jesus and you see people batting naked in the water 
Now, and when these people come out, they will tell you, of course, it was in a church that they, you know, they went to. But, but no, that wasn't a church. That was a shrine. That was a temple of the devil. And so these persons will claim that they are abiding in Christ. But in reality and in totality, the truth is that they are not abiding in Christ. They are abiding in something else. And the, these are the kinds of branches that will be yanked off the vine. He said, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abided in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Without Christ, we can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Verse 6 is scary. You see, when, when we are not abiding in the Lord, the branch is withered and it is yanked off the tree and it will not be useful for any other thing but for firewood. Now, let's look at it this way. If we abide in the Lord, listen to me. I understand that Jesus can make us prosperous. And that is why he said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, he says, seek ye first the kingdom, first the kingdom, and not just seeking the kingdom first, but with the, the, the principles of the kingdom, the constitutionality of the kingdom, you know, the, the rules and the regulations of the kingdom, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So when we seek the kingdom first, and we seek also the righteousness of the kingdom, Kingdom, and that is when we are abiding. And you see, the, the principles, the righteousness of the kingdom, the rules of the kingdom are all enshrined and revealed in the scriptures. And that's why Jesus said, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, that is when we begin to bear fruit. And so he tells us that any branch in him that does not bear fruit will be cut off you know, when, when people say that once you are in Christ, you don't need to do any other thing. You don't need to do anything that, you know, the blood of Jesus Christ has covered every other thing that you're saying, your, your, your inactivity, your unrighteousness, your unfaithfulness, you know, is hidden under the blood. I look at them, I shake my head because that is a proper lie. I don't, I don't know how to put it, but it, the lie is very proper. The lie is... Is, is, is proper, coming from the father of all liars. That is why That is why it is proper. You understand? Because this person has been terribly deceived. And Jesus said, he's telling you, you must produce fruit. If you don't bear fruit, men, when you are cut off, men will gather this branch that has withered and has dried off. Men will gather the same and use these branches as firewood but then he said a, guiding against this he said if ye abide in me and my words abide in you when we make the word of the lord our source of confidence our source of faith our source of satisfaction it becomes very very impossible for the lies of the devil to sway us either to the left or to the right Apostle Paul talk about those that are, you know, carried by every wind of doctrine. You know, we have the doctrine of Satan, we have the doctrine of the devil. But if we have enough of the word of God in the inside of us, it becomes impossible for the doctrines of the devil to sway us to any side. We will, we will be very strong. We will be very confident in the God of our fathers. You see, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask. Now, this is the condition. Because the Lord is seeking to be glorified. God is not glorified in poverty, actually, because that is not his will for you. He may allow you for a season to go through, through, through the, the, you know, the wilderness of wants, through the wilderness of, of lack you don't have. You know, at some point in time, it was the, the will of God to allow the devil to touch Job and all the things he had. But he was restricted. The devil was restricted not to touch his life. So he could touch his health. He touched his wealth. He took away everything that he possessed, even took away his children and possessed his wife and took his wife away. His wife became enemies. He took away his friends, possessed them with this, the lying spirit. They came to accuse Job. He possessed them with the judgmental spirit. You know, because we've seen many people, when you're going through trials, people come to tell you, 
that it is because of your sin. It is not always because of your sin. Sometimes the Lord may allow you to go through that. And when you go through that, you, you, are, like, you are like a precious stone going through the process of refining. And when you have been refined, you come out you know, stronger. That is the song you know, uh, uh, that says that, pressure makes diamond much harder than stones. You understand? So pressure makes diamond much harder than stone. If, pre if, if diamond, you know, doesn't go through the pressure process, it won't be as hard as it is, even when it looks fragile, you know, on the surface, but it is hardened because it, it went through the process of pressure, the process of refining. So sometimes the Lord allows us to go through this process so that we can be refined, so that we can, we can, we, we can grow in rank. All right. But he, his ultimate will for us is not that we live in objectivity because we don't glorify his name. When you don't have food to feed your family, you're not glorifying God. Listen, the Bible says that even a man that cannot provide for his own immediate family is worse than an infidel. So you discover that it is not the will of God for you to be so, so you know, poor as such that you cannot feed your family. But we know it's not your fault. You know, sometimes it's not our, our fault. Sometimes also it is the fault of these persons because laziness cannot be compensated. The Bible said, let he that does not work, let him not eat. So we must work and then expect God to bless us. And so he says, if ye abide in me and my words abide in ye, then ye shall ask what ye will. You shall ask what you will. You shall ask him for provisions. You shall ask him for health. You shall ask him for long life. You shall ask him for, for, for grace, for prosperity, whatever. And he said, and it shall be done unto you. For, you know, he said in, in, you know, in John, I think is it 6, 17, verse uh, 24, I'm not very, uh, is it 16 or thereabout? He said, hitherto you have asked me nothing. He said, ask and it shall be given to you that my father may be glorified in the son. My father may be glorified in the son. That is what, yes, John chapter 16, verse 24. He said, hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh. When I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. You know, the place I'm looking for is still somewhere here. It's still somewhere here that the Father might be glorified. So it is the glory of God. It is, it is the joy of the Lord that we, we abide in the Lord, that we are, I know, our prayers are answered. Now, we, we look at, we look at, in verse, uh, from verse 23, and in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name. So it is actually the delight of the Father to give to us whatever we ask of him. It is the delight of the Father that we ask, because when we ask, he gives us. When we ask, he doesn't upbraid anybody. He gives, you know, um, liberally. And so here he said where we were in John chapter 15, verse 7. He says, and if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified. So when the Father, when the Father receives our petition and he gives to us, he is glorified. And so in... It, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. So when we bear fruit, when the Father grants us our request, we bear fruit, the righteous fruit of the kingdom. And then we bear fruit also of the things that the Lord, you know, gives us or the things that the life demands. You know, when people see it, the Lord is glorified. You know, it is actually uh, reproachful to the Lord that a child of God goes to 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 an occultist or to a pagan. I have preached to this pagan. I had preached to this pagan and told him that Jesus supplies all things, that there is life in Jesus, there is eternal life in Jesus. 
And at the same time, I returned to the pagan. I returned to this idolatrous person asking him, please, you know, uh, I want to go to somewhere and I don't have enough money to transport myself. Please, can you lend me? Oh my God, that is a reproach. The reproach is terrible. It is a terrible reproach. So God is not glorified in, you know, uh, in our, in, in, in our, our life that is outside of his will for us, but there is a condition that must be met. And that condition is a continuous abiding in the Lord and then his word abiding in us. Now, when you look at John chapter 14, verses 12, John chapter 14, verse 12 to 16, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father, and whosoever ye shall, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So this is where I was trying to quote the other time, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So the Father is glorified when our prayers are answered. And so verse 15 said, If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So the condition for forgiving us from the Father, because Jesus is our mediator. So the condition for, for us receiving from the Father is loving Jesus and keeping his commandments. And when we call the, to the Father, Jesus will stand by and bear witness of us and say, Father, that son is worthy. That daughter is worthy. Please answer him, answer her. And when that is done, the Father is being glorified in the Son. And when the Son is glorified, we who are the recipients of the blessings of God are, you know, walking. We are glorified by the Father, by the Son. And so, you know, it, it is a kind of a rippling effect. It has an effect. It, it, you know, it comes from the Father to the Son and the Son to the Father. And then from the Father to the Son, the Son to us, and then we return the same glory to him because when we appear gloriously before the Lord, our God is glorified. And then it is then if we love him and keep his commandment, that is when he will pray the Father and say, Daddy, he is qualified. Please bless him for me. And then he said in verse, in verse 16, I will pray the Father. I will pray the Father that the Father will give you, he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. So the conditions actually is abiding in the Lord. Now we look at, we look at John chapter 15 again, verse 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire. Now let's look at this place, compare it with Matthew chapter 5. We read Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, we read verses 13 to 16. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. And it says 13, 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savour, where would shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot by men, underfoot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Now we'll stop here first. Look at it. You know, when the salt lost or loses its savour, it becomes useless, just like the, the branch of the tree that is not bearing fruit will be cut off. So also the salt that has lost its saltiness will be cast, you know, away, and men shall tread on it, men shall trample on it. In this too, you discover that men have very big role to play. You know, when you are when you are retaining your savour as a salt, you are salting the earth, you are you are preserving the earth. Now, but when you lose your, your, you know, your, your, your savour, your taste as a salt, men will be the ones that will trample on you. Men will, you know, ridicule you. Men will say, didn't you say you are this and that? Now, let us see now. You know, but when we abide still in the Lord and he carries out his own responsibility over us, it becomes impossible for us to lose our savour. And as long as we don't lose our savour, nobody can cast us off. The devil cannot gain access to our lives. He cannot touch us. And so we remain, you know, immovable. 
if we abide in the Lord and the carrying out our responsibilities. Now, devil has no right. He won't come. He won't touch us. You know, and the Bible says, ye are the light of the world. The city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and he giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And so you see it, our works glorify the Father. So we have the responsibility responsibility to make our light so shine that men will irresistibly now have no choice but to lift up and glorify our God that is in heaven. That people will look at and say, of a surety, this man, this woman is a child of God. He is of God. Look at, look at his work. Look at his conduct. Even sometimes they try to attack you for your, your righteousness, for your good works. Because God is attracted to good works. We're not just talking about work, but we're talking about good works. Listen to me, after salvation, good works is requisite. You know, for, for whatever work that you will have with Jesus Christ. And so don't be fooled, don't be deceived by fake preachers that, tells, that tell you you don't have to do anything. Our good works glorifies God. If we don't maintain good works, we're not glorifying God. And God is not looking for those that will bring him reproach. He's not looking for those that will bring him shame. He's looking for those that will bring him glory. If you look at that John chapter 15, you know, we look at verses 21 and 23. As I begin to round up, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him. And we will manifest and will manifest myself to him. I, I, I don't know if you get that. I read it again. He that had my commandments and he kept them. It is not just enough hearing, not just enough listening, you know, to me. It is also quite, a, and it is not enough for me to preach it. It is, it is more, more, more suitable, more useful, more important to also practice what I'm preaching. And also to you, it is very, very uh, important that you seek to keep what you are hearing. Maintain it. Try it, practice it, and you will get results. Jesus said, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Jesus definitely will manifest himself to me if I love him and I keep his commandments. And so somebody tells you, you don't have to do any other thing that Jesus has done all, and so you go about committing sexual immorality, keeping girlfriends and boyfriends, keeping sugar mommies and sugar that is, you know, uh, uh, getting yourself involved in an extramarital relationship. These are evil. You know, getting involved in, in, in you know, fraudulent activities, making money the way that are not right. You are not glorifying God in this. You are rather glorifying the devil. But Jesus said, if we keep his commandment, he will manifest himself to us. Look at verse 20, 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him. Now, the first, you you, if you love Jesus, you keep his commandment. He will love you. He will manifest himself to you. Now, he, 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 Jesus is not standing in isolation. Now, he says, if you love him, you will keep his words. And then his father will love you too. And so this love becomes two-way love. And we, now, the, in verse 21, it was Jesus. Now, in verse 23, it becomes, we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Meaning that the father and the son, of course, with the Holy Spirit, we, we, we come unto him and we will live in him. Now, this person becomes the, the original ark of the presence of God. That is why we don't have the wooden ark anymore, because anyone that loves the Lord and keeps his commandment becomes the ark of the presence of God. And so wherever you are, you are carrying the presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I mean, this is not my words, brethren. It is the scripture. It is the Bible. It is the Bible. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. I just read 21 and 23 to you. The Lord said, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him now if the father becomes interested and the father becomes interested now you as a man will not be be so so happy to see the you know your 
your, your person or your place of interest to be uh, to be reproached, to put to be put in, uh, in you know into shame. You want to defend that which you have vested your interest in with everything that you've got. For instance, you have a son. You know you wouldn't want your son to be disgraced. You will put in every effort to defend your son to protect your son. And so the Lord says, if we love him and keep he keep his commandment, himself the Father will love us, and then. They, they will not love us from far. You know, fake lovers love from afar. You know, but whosoever loves, loves even when they are, you know, a distant away from us, but you will always feel this love very close. And so the Lord said, we will not just stay far away. We will come, we will make our tent, we will make our abode in this person that has loved us, that has loved and kept our commandments. I, I could go on and on and on and speak of this because it is an interesting topic, glorifying the Lord you know, the, 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 the glory of God is very important to God. And so God doesn't play with his glory. It is his will. It is his will. You know, when, when preachers will also tell you, uh, will all, all, only quote for you that uh, the, the, uh, I, I wish above all things that you prosper, um, um, that you prosper and be in good health, even as your spirit prospered. But they won't go ahead to tell you that it is not just that will of prospering you know, in the flesh, but there are things that are involved. We will do a lot of talking. And as long as we go ahead to practice what we're hearing and what we're preaching, this God will glorify himself in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Child of God, I want you to bow down your head now and begin to talk to the Lord. I begin to talk to the Lord. Begin to talk to the Lord. Tell him, Father, I present my life to you as a living sacrifice in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, here we are presenting our lives to you. Lord, I present my life to you. Father, you have used me to dispense this gospel truth this hour. Lord, all I'm asking you is help me. Father, that I will not just be a preacher, I will, oh God, practice what I preach in the name of Jesus. Father, I therefore surrender and submit my life to you. I want you to help me. I want you to, oh God, Father, help me so that my life will be trimmed, so that my life will be pruned, oh Jesus Christ. Father, that I will be an instrument of glory to you. Father, that I will be a lover of you and a keeper of your commandments. Lord, that I will not be left outside of the will. Father, I want to abide in you. Give me the grace to remain in you. Give me the grace so God that your word will abide in me Father give me the hunger and the desire for your word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ make me oh God of heaven a carrier of your presence please begin to talk to the Lord ask him tell him that you're offering your life to, so that he will use it to his glory Father make me a carrier of your presence make me a carrier of your presence Lord Father use me to your glory I cease to own oh God any right over my life Father I relinquish my right oh God God, Father, to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father, have your way in my life, have your way in my spirit. Oh God, I offer myself to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Father, give me the grace to bear much fruit. Begin to talk to the Lord for you in the name of Jesus. Father, that I might bear much fruit for you, oh gracious God. Give me the grace, Lord. Give me the grace, Father, to bear much fruit for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, grace to bear much fruit given to me in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Heavenly Father, anything that that wants to take the place of God in my life or share in his glory, die in the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Father, whatsoever it is that wants to take your glory, that wants to take your place in my life, oh God, Father, let it die, let it die, let it die. Anything that wants to share your glory in my life, Father, I reject it, oh God, I command it to die in the name of Jesus Christ. I begin to tell the Lord that from today you glorify him in your body and in your soul, in your spirit. Begin to talk to the Lord, Father, I glorify you in my body. Lord, I glorify you in my spirit. Lord, I glorify you in my soul. In the name of Jesus Christ, from today, Lord, I will never ever oh god of heaven give my life over to anything that does not give you glory in the name of jesus begin to talk to the lord tell him that you are dedicating your life to his service to his honor to his holy name father i rededicate my life to your service father to your honor to your glory in the mighty name of jesus christ ask him to make you an ambassador of peace and unity in the kingdom of god father make me a true ambassador father in heaven bearing the light of this truth in the mighty name of jesus christ thank you everlasting father receive all the glory in 
Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. I'll be coming your way again very soon, you know, in this devotion. But today you can read Leviticus chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7. May the good Lord bless you. Please kindly share the link of this video. Uh, follow us on this page. Follow our, 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 our YouTube channels, uh, the End Time Truth Television, and the end is nearer. I may the good Lord bless you, keep you rapturable in the mighty name of Jesus. Till I come your way again in the next video, I remain your brother in Christ Jesus. And I want to say to you, Shalom.